I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 16th of November, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm filming on the iPhone because I want to use the Olympus. I've got a process down that is working fantastic. I think I've got the sound figured out. Everything is working great, except it seems that even though it feels incredibly comfortable out here to me and we're not in direct sunlight or even sort of direct sunlight, we're barely in indirect sunlight, the camera overheats after between five and 10 minutes of usage. That is one of the problems with Nicaragua. Things get warm and once you adjust to it, it doesn't change the fact that other things get warm. So it's warm. I feel great. This is super comfortable. It is a beautiful day and there is a snowstorm heading to my father in Buffalo. He should be getting that in about two days uh, while we are balmy, warm, sunny, and clear. It's time to head to the beach and enjoy things. So today is Wednesday. I have a lot of work to do this week. It is a busy week. I don't have a lot of time for the updates, but I'm doing my best to get different shots within this courtyard. Since we're on the iPhone, at least shake it up a little bit. My foot is feeling better, continues to improve. Sometimes I still have like severe nerve stuff, but it's getting there. So hopefully, hopefully all is well very soon. Uh, today, I really didn't get a chance to do much of anything. The only thing, so we're gonna have a topic. We're gonna be talking about sports in Nicaragua in just a minute. But before we get to that, I just wanna say, so this evening, uh, Paul and Dominic and I went out to uh, El Roma, uh, an Italian restaurant um, very close to El Centro. Well, it's in El Centro, but very close to the, the center of El Centro, just a little bit north, um, very close to Valenti's and Dr. Bird. Uh, we have had, their food before, but it's been about 10 months. We only ever had it here. Never been to El Roma before. Uh, so we stopped in. It's in a beautiful location, but a spot that really doesn't get a lot of traffic. So I find it a little bit odd that it's such a nice street and it's a street that we just end up never using for some reason. Uh, but we we went in and it's, it's very yellow there. It's painted very yellow. Um, and we were the only people there. It's a large restaurant and for the entire time we're there, not a single other customer came or went. It's rough out on the beach recently um or in the, i'm sorry it's rough in the region recently like traffic on everything is down there's no tourists um and it seems like businesses are just failing left and right that seems to be the story of the week we know so many places that have packed up and given up uh and just closed their doors and like there's no indication that roma is going to close but they also had no customers whatsoever on a wednesday night it's not a busy night but you expect there to be somebody there's no way that they made enough money to justify staying open with only the three of us there yes we got food to go for the kids but still it's it's got to be really tough and what if we had not gone they may have had a night with no people whatsoever Anyway, that was our night. Uh, we all got pasta and uh, it was decent. Um, not my favorite place, but it's certainly worth going to. And when you like Italian food like we do, having so few places in town means it's really important to have more options. We can go out to the beach and get some, but it's such a long drive. But we do uh, want to go out there now that Puesta del Sol is open again because it is... Um, uh, it has been closed for renovations, so we haven't been able to eat there in months, but they are open, so we will be making an effort to go there from the beach. All right, today's topic, because we got that covered and there's so little going on, um, and I've got a busy weekend coming up, mostly of work, so this is really, uh, we're doing topics mostly this week, especially as I can't walk around. Our topic today is sports in Nicaragua, and specifically, what are the popular sports where do you go see them? Like, what, what is the availability of actually seeing sports here in Nicaragua? Now, obviously, being a Latin American country, sports are a big deal. But you might expect that soccer, or football, as it's known in most of the world, would be the most popular sport. And that is not true. It is actually the tertiary sport. The primary sport in Nicaragua is baseball. Baseball is only really popular in three countries in the region. Nicaragua, the Dominican Republic, and Cuba. Why is it so popular here in Nicaragua? And it's a big thing. It is the biggest leagues. They send players to the United States and to other countries to play. It makes lots of money. They play in the Latin American all regional 17 country league. Why is that such a thing? And why is it that way instead of football, which every other country in the region, except for the ones I mentioned, has as their top sport? The answer is one that we should know, but very few Americans at least know this history for the majority, the massive majority, like 60 to 70 years, so 60 to 70% majority of the 20th century and some amount of time during the 19th century, but not nearly so much and not nearly as influential. 
very strongly during the 20th century, during the same years that baseball became really popular in the United States. Yes, it existed there in the U.S. prior to the early 1900s, but it didn't really become the national sport until the early 1900s. And then throughout the 20th century, it really took hold. The same here in Nicaragua, because Nicaragua for almost all the 20th century was occupied by U.S. forces. So U.S. culture, U.S. forces, U.S. actual American citizens were here in the country for huge amounts of that time in large numbers, and that caused a number of factors. First of all, there were many Americans simply looking for baseball games to go to, or Americans were playing baseball games, and so introducing the Nicaraguense to it because it was something that they were doing anyway. And there is a lot of, anytime you have a situation like that, a lot of the population starts to look to culture of the occupying forces as simply a uh, a way of connecting with them or understanding their culture or in some cases uh, uh, wanting to emulate it. And so throughout the 20th century, baseball was introduced strongly to Nicaragua and over time it simply became the national sport. And today Nicaragua takes incredibly great pride in how good their baseball is and they are consistently the all Latin American champion country. So this is a very baseball centered culture. Uh, and you're gonna find it almost everywhere. You have multiple leagues, you can play amateur and pro, everybody, your little kids in the street are much more likely to be throwing a baseball around than they are to be kicking a soccer ball around. It's really interesting. There are five major cities of baseball. Managua, of course, with the Indios. Here in uh, Leon, we have the Lions, the Leones. Up in Chinandegas, the Tigres, Tigers. Uh, in Esteli is Train del Norte literally train of the north uh and in rivas is the gigantes or the giants uh however here gigantes is a reference to the giant uh statues of the uh spaniard women that they bring around in the streets so in some ways yes it's gigantes just like there's the uh, tokyo giants and the uh giants in the u.s and the new york giants and it, that would be a different sport but all those things that the giants are a really standard team name but here gigante means something really special as well and this is the time of the year where the gigantes which come from sutiava right here in the leon district uh, are a big thing and the giant one the national gigante is on our street just down the way a little bit at the museum of myths and legends, except for during this season, they take it out and put it in the central square, but the rest of the year, that's where she lives. So that is baseball here. If you want to go to a baseball game, those five cities are the ones that are always hosting. It is on TV all the time. So if you go to a bar, you will see it. If you uh, have, you know, Claro TV or whatever, you'll have channels to be able to watch all the national baseball games all the time. And people really do. People keep up with it. Everyone knows the score. Everyone knows when it's going on. Everyone is involved. Going to the stadium, I don't know the prices of normal stadium seating. I think it's about 2 to $3. So this is a very cheap pastime. Still, that's a lot for Nicaraguense to be spending to go see a game, but it's doable. And if you're a tourist here or an expat living here, it is absolutely nothing. Go to a game. It's a really great way to get involved with the culture, get to know people and see what life is like and like get into something that just not very many tourists do. However, you do notice a number of tourists at the game. So it is a thing that people uh, take the time to do. I don't know if the hostels or something are recommending it, but it certainly is something that people can do. Uh, for the VIP box, like we like to use, $7, roughly 250 cord really affordable you get private air conditioning quiet space to watch the game it's fantastic we love that so we have started to find that that getting involved with our local team is a lot of fun it has been a great way to connect with people uh here in the country so we're enjoying that a lot now baseball's number one soccer is not number two what is it's boxing boxing is huge here if you go out, if there's a boxing match on, everybody will be watching it. When I was here in 2015, I ended up watching boxing matches while waiting at a pizza place. When Paul and I were first here uh, in Managua back in early 2021, we ended up watching a boxing match. We went out and an entire club was turned into just viewing for a boxing match. It is a really big thing. Everyone takes it super seriously. And it is not just that they watch it, it is that it is uh, Nicaraguan fighters all the time in really good rankings. So they're actually watching uh, Nicaraguans fighting. That's why it's so popular. At number three, yes, soccer is still played. So football is everywhere. Most of the towns, especially those that don't have the baseball teams, will have football teams. And every, I mean, all the big ones have them, but they are nowhere near the popularity of baseball, not even close. When you're going out, like what is our, what are we gonna go see? It's always baseball. The idea that you're gonna go watch football, sure, you could do it really not a big thing. And if you watch Club de Cuervos, which is one of the best Netflix shows 
really, really good. Uh, they have a spinoff that is supposed to take place, but for some reason is not filmed in Nicaragua, and they treat it as a football backwater because it really is, because all that effort has gone into baseball instead. That said, I have yet to make it to a football game here in uh, Nicaragua. I do plan to do so, uh, but it's going to take a bit more work because honestly, I don't know where it's played and no one talks about it. Uh, so that's something that I'm going to have to seek out, but I do want to take you guys along. Go do that and get an experience of that as well. Uh, and I'll continue to take you guys to baseball games. We went to one last night, obviously. That's why I'm talking about it today. And then on Friday night, we're already scheduled. We're going to be going and seeing another one. We are uh, in Leon again playing uh, Chinandega Tigres. Uh, and we have the box seat again. And so I will bring you guys along for that. Also, there's lots of other sports played here. Golf, not really, <laughs> um, but things like American football are actually played, and I managed to go to a game of that about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, I'm hoping to get out at some point to some of those and film more for you guys because I got very little filming done. I didn't know what to expect. I hadn't been living here for very long. So one of the things you may not realize is it's really stressful bringing like cameras and everything to events when you don't know what it's going to be like. You don't know if like carrying a backpack is going to be a problem. You don't know if you need your hands free. You don't know if you're going to have a comfortable place to sit or to put things down or someone to watch things or you just don't know what to expect. And so for doing a lot of this filming, I like bringing a lot of equipment because I need different cameras under different scenarios and situations and I can't always do that when it's something new. Now that I know how the baseball games work, for example, I have no problem bringing lots of camera gear and I know I can sit it down and it's very safe and like I can really bring everything with me. I can bring the tripod, all sorts of things, take pictures and do video. Um, I, I'll be able to do some some you know uh, commentary right from inside the booth because it's really not that busy. I can show what's going on in the booth so you guys get a feel for what it's like. All that's relatively easy, but I didn't know that. And the first time we went to the VIP, there's no way I could have done that. It was elbow to elbow, but that was because it was a playoff game. Now that it's normal season, lots of open space, very easy to get in, completely different experience. So we'll get more and more of that. Uh, so things like American football, I had no idea what it was going to be like now that I know it's lots of open space and there's very few people and I just need someone to watch my bag. I can go and film all kinds of stuff. I want to bring you guys along some of those things because those kinds of activities, they're just fun. I'm not a sports person at all, but I think the whole thing is neat because it's a different country and the sports are treated very differently and it's always locals that are playing. It's just not professionals being brought in from somewhere else. So the whole experience is interesting and fun and i think if you're visiting nicaragua especially if you're visiting for a long time if you're an expat or you're here for months that sports are a big part of local life and taking that time to try to experience that like a local very valuable um, and it gets you away from those insulated not intentionally but insulated tourist activities if you go out to a restaurant there's a really good chance you're going to go to a restaurant servicing expats the nature of you finding it suggests that it's for servicing expats and they have services targeting expats because they know that most of the expats that are there don't want to do local things and it's just you end up naturally isolated and going to a sporting event is a great way to break out of that and kind of be forced to interact with people just like you or everyone else and uh, it can be educational, it can be fun, it can expose you to a lot of things and potentially open doors to doing other activities that may be a bit more off the off the expat trail, off the tourist trail and that sort of thing. So that is sports in Nicaragua. That's why it is the way that it is. Those are the sports that you can enjoy a lot. We're getting some mosquitoes or something is biting me uh, the last couple days. We're in a season where we're entering the dry season and so they tend to be pretty active because it hasn't dried out enough to stop them. Um, and I honestly have not had to deal with mosquitoes for months and suddenly, and they may not be mosquitoes, it may just be flies, but something is starting to bother me. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe, ask your questions below, put some comments, get the conversation going. Have you been to sporting events here or in other countries? What do you like to do? What have you found? What do you want to see? Let me know what you guys, ask your questions and stuff because that's how I get out so much of this content. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, I'll put the, the link right down here. That does so much to help the channel. That is how I manage to afford the cameras and the motion VFX and the other things that I use because trust me, I spend every dollar and way more than comes in from YouTube and from Buy Me A Coffee just on the equipment and software necessary to make the channel. Okay, I probably could do it with less. It's not necessarily necessary to make the channel, but the stuff that I'm using to make the channel costs more than the channel makes. And that's fine, but if you want to support, it really does help. Uh, it's meaningful. And of course, if you could share this on social media, because I don't have Facebook, uh, that does a lot to get the word out. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you. Oh, perfect timing.
tomorrow.